showing you how to create a basic moving platform, just like the one shown here. But note that this is applicable to any moving object in your game. So you can have a moving platform that works this way, or you can have a, an enemy character, for example. Any object that you want to move across the screen and bounce back and forward, you would do exactly the same thing as what we're about to do. So what have we got so far? We've got a stationary platform. We've actually got two of these. And we also have a character, player character, and we have a death barrier. And the way that it's set up so far, the player character can jump around and it can move around on the screen, but this jump is just way too far. And when the player character collides with the death barrier, the game restarts. So what we want is we want to create a moving, a moving platform that actually moves across from these two points so that there is still a little bit of challenge for the person playing the game, but it isn't as easy as just walking straight across from here to here. So what do we need first? Well, we probably um, need to create a moving platform. Um, and what I'm going to do just to show the difference is I'm going to create a new object. We're going to make it a tiled sprite and we're gonna call it moving platform so that it is actually different from our other platforms. Being a platform, of course, we have to add a behavior. So click on, on platform. And we also need to make sure that we add some color to this so that it's not invisible. So if we go create, edit with Piscal, then I'm probably gonna choose a slightly darker gray than my original platform. And if I use the paint bucket, you can see this is filling up the whole screen. I'm just gonna add some light gray highlights. I'm just gonna add some squiggly lines so that you can see how this repeats. And then we'll go save. So if I move now move this um, moving platform onto my game, I probably wanna make it around about that big. And let's just check that it's roughly the same height as our other object. So, if I click on my stationary platform, I can see that I set the height to 43. I might just round that height down to 40. I'll do that to the other side as well. And so I want to make sure that this is 40 as well. Okay, so that's good. If we wanted them to be in line with each other, um, what we could also do is look at this Y score. So if we click on the stationary platform, we can see that the Y is set to 325. So let's change that as well. 325 means that now our Y is the same. So they are actually in line with each other. And just checking the other um, stationary platform, 325 as well. Okay, so now we wanna move this platform to there. And firstly, what we need to talk about is that we want this platform to move in a straight line. And what is a straight line? So by definition, um, a straight line is, if we have a look at this definition here, in geometry, a straight line is a line with no bends. So it's perfectly straight. It is just um, some, a, a line that moves in one direction. So from point A, to point B. So we want to use that rule and we want to think about how our moving platform is going to move from point A to point B. So the next thing that we want in our game is we want to create an, an object. This doesn't have to have a behavior and it doesn't have to be tiled. So let's just call it point A and without worrying about behaviors, let's add an animation and we can edit with Piscal again. Now I'm gonna color this in, uh, let's just go resize. I'm gonna color this in to just make it red so that I can see it. And I might even, if I just grab some white, I might even just draw a lot, draw an A on this, a really bad A, uh, just to signify that this is point A. So we've called it point A and it looks like it's point A. If I then drag that onto my game, okay, I also probably want to set the height 
Um, I could set the height and width so that it's a square. Okay, but this is going to be point A. And our moving platform is supposed to move from point A to point B. So what we want to do is we want to create a new object, create a sprite, and we want to call that point B. Again, there's no behaviors. And we want to add an animation, edit with Piscal. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to color it red. And we're going to whack a white B in the middle so that everybody knows that it's point B. Okay. And again, no behaviors. We've called it point B and it looks like point B. And then we're going to place this. And we might again, let's just give it a custom size. It's going to be 40 by 40. We also might want to, if you're um, going to be really, really precise, we might want to make that 325 and 325 as well. So now they're all perfectly in line. So what we're going to say, in a very similar, to way, in a very similar to what, um, algorithm to what we've got for the player character, we're going to say um, if the moving platform is in a collision with point A, then it's going to do something. There's going to be some sort of action. And if it's in a collision with point B, there's going to be some other sort of action. Now, if this was a real object, um, the only way to move any object is to apply a force to it. So we're going to say if this moving platform, if I just drag it onto, now at the moment it is in a collision with point A, when it's over here just floating out by itself, it's not in a collision. So you have to make sure that your moving platform is in a collision with at least one of these points before you hit play. We're going to create our algorithms now. So let's say as an event, a new event, the condition was if the moving platform is in a collision with point A. If the moving platform is in a collision with point A, then we need to do something to the moving platform. We need to add a force. Now there's a few options for force. You can add a force at an angle. You can add a force to move towards an object. That's actually the one that we want to do. You can add a force that moves the object towards a, a certain position, a fixed position, or add just add a force as a number. But we're gonna select this one, add a force towards an object. So we're gonna say, if the, let's just go back to our condition, if the moving platform is in a collision with point A, then something happens to the moving platform, we add a force and it moves towards point B. Uh, now it's giving you some options. We have an instant force and a permanent force. Okay, instant force says the force will only push the object during the time of one frame. Okay, whereas a permanent force, this will push the object forever unless you use the action stop the object. So what we want to do is we want to actually select a permanent force. And so what have we got so far? If the moving platform is in a collision with point A, move the moving platform to point B with a permanent force. We forgot to put in our, the amount of pixels per second, so that's the speed of the object, and this needs to be a number. So I'm just gonna type in 100 and see what happens. It said in there something about how if we use a permanent force, we have to also use the action stop the object. So what we're gonna say is, um, before the object moves, we also need to add another action saying stop the object. So we select moving platform, we select stop the object. So basically, if I'm just if I just rearrange this, what we're saying is the object has to stop and we have to remove all forces before we then apply a permanent force. So if it's already moving towards point A, it will stop when it gets to point A and then it will move back towards point B. We can then create a new event. If we select and we copy, we can paste this down just by clicking. And then we might select by copying and paste these down as well. Except what we're gonna say is the opposite. So if the moving platform is in a collision with point B, we are going to stop 
and we are going to move towards point A. Let's see what this looks like and let's test it out and see if it works. So at the moment, what are we seeing? The object is in collision with point A, it stops and moves towards point B, then it stops at point B and moves towards point A. So just keeping in mind that this stop is very important. The object has to stop when it gets to that point and then we apply another force to send it off in the other direction. Okay. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this is that you can still see A and B. So very simply we're going to add a new event. We don't need a condition because it's just going to happen at all times. There's nothing that will trigger it. It's just always going to happen. So we're going to our actions. Let me just show you we don't need a condition. We're just going to go straight into actions and we might say point A we're going to hide that. We can't delete it because then it won't exist. Okay, so we're going to say at all times, there's no condition, we're going to hide point A. And then we can copy that and change that to point B. So we can say at all times, we want to hide point A and hide point B. And this is what that looks like. So you get a much cleaner game. And it's a bit probably not um, super challenging at the moment. You may want to, in order to increase the challenge, you might want to increase the speed of the object. So maybe let's go 150 and if we're changing it in one direction, let's change it in the other. 150 is a bit faster, but uh, maybe that's still not challenging enough. So you might want to keep increasing the speed as you go. So 200, 200, just bump up the speed until you're happy with it and you're thinking, wow, that's, that's fast enough that it is challenging for the person playing the game and there you go.